Hey dollhouse people, another miniaturist, Whitney Labrie here, and this week I'm finally going to decorate the dollhouse conservatory, and I thought for Halloween I'd be really practical. Practical magic, that is. Now this movie came out in 1998. It's a fantasy romantic drama about witches, a family curse, love, and acceptance, and it features Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. However, we're really going to be concentrating on the house which is a character of its own it's gorgeous and when i watched this movie i never wanted to be a witch so bad and it actually inspired the aga oven range that i used in my own dollhouse kitchen but today we're going to be focusing on the conservatory as it's a huge part of the movie and i thought it would be really fun to attempt to mimic some of the features in my own room okay so the conservatory i made this uh, probably about a year ago and if you want to see the video on how i did that i have the link listed below of course i wanted it to be removable from the house so i've moved it over to the table while i work on it and then the flooring i did inside is a joint compound flooring that's also included in the other tutorial in the link Below. So here's one of the pieces I'm going to use. This is a really great piece here. I just love all the cubbies. I think it's going to work really well and I'm going to paint it white. I'm going to do a shabby white because when this movie came out it was like all the rage. Shabby chic was a huge thing and so everybody was painting their wood items in a distressed white or cream color and so I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm also going to remove the hardware and I'm going to make some out of polymer clay later. And then here is the kitchen table here. I'm going to do the same thing. With this one, I'm just going to do one coat of like an off-white color. And then this piece here actually was in one of my haul episodes. And I had it on eBay for a while. No one purchased it. It, it is actually pretty shabby on its own. I'm just going to do a little bit of paint on that to cover some of the blue and we're going to go from there. So I wish that I had a matte finish spray paint in white because I would rather just spray paint this piece here than having to individually paint all those cubbies. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it first though, which is, would be normal even if it was going to spray paint it. But then also too, I wanted to show you this. You may already know this little trick, but this is just a nail file and it's really great for those really tiny spaces if you want to do some little tiny sanding and it really can get inside those areas so just a little tip that I've learned over the years and so now that it's sanded and washed I am going to go ahead and start the painting so I'm using I don't want to do a bright white I'm going to use this white here which is actually called wicker white so it's more like a warm finish and I'm going to go ahead and start with painting those cubbies I don't know yet if I'm gonna to have to do more than one coat because I think this thing is pretty old it's really going to absorb quite a bit of the paint and I don't really want a lot of the paint strokes from the brush showing a little is fine because that's kind of the idea you know you want to make it look older and you know I like to kind of think about stories behind the pieces so maybe this was a, a piece that the family had for a long period of time and then it just was passed down and then based on the current trends maybe the new owner said you know what I'm going to shabby chic this thing it is the late 90s after all so that's what I'm going to do. So now that that's done, I'm going to let it dry. And then here's the table. And I went ahead. Well, I think one coat's perfect for that. Actually, it turned out beautiful, exactly how I had hoped. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that other piece. And I'm just going to basically go over the blue. Just to, I'm not going to cover it completely. I just want to make it a little bit more subtle because it's so bright. It's such a nice royal blue. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that also. And then... Ta-da! All right, so now that my three pieces are painted, I'm gonna set those aside. I really do want them to fully dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my polymer clay. And what I wanna do is I want to make a little mortar and pestle. I think that would really be fun for my little conservatory because in the movie, this is where they are actually putting together their potion mixes and they're grabbing all their herbs and their spices and, and their flowers and they're putting it all inside the little mortar and pestle and then they're grinding it up to make for their potions. So I'm just taking some of my black polymer clay, I'm rolling it into a ball and then I'm using the end of this wooden dowel to kind of mold it. Now, a better technique to do this would have been if I had rolled it out like dough and then used a small round cookie cutter to do a round shape and then taken that round shape and placed it around the edge of this dowel here but I actually don't have that so I just kind of improvised okay and then once I got it at the end of that dowel I kind of shaped it into the shape that I wanted and then I took a razor blade and just cut the edge to make a nice sharp edge at the top, or a nice clean edge, I should say. 
And then I took another piece of the clay and kind of shaped it into a base and then added the base. And then I just took another piece of the polymer clay and rolled it out to look like a little pestle to go with our little mortar here. Okay, and then I wanted to do a couple of like cup-shaped handles to go on my larger shelf piece over there. So I rolled out some of the polymer clay and then I kind of, it's kind of hard to explain, but I kind of squished it down a little bit at the bottom so that it would be shaped more like a bean. And then I just took my toothpick and shaped it out to give it a cup appearance and then added a little bit of detail and then popped those in the oven all right and then once they're done I'm gonna set those aside because I've decided that I want to add a little bit of color to my larger shelf unit here and so I took this celery green and I'm just going to do one coat of celery just on the very back because I think adding that green is gonna be really pretty and then that way also it will add a little bit of color which I really enjoy and then that's what it looks like the next thing I'm going to do is my sister actually for Christmas gave me all of these small jars and there are a couple different scales here but I have several of them that are definitely 12 scale and then in addition to those I have a few smaller jars that are already filled with stuff that I've had collected over the years. So I want to make labels. So then I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut out the labels that I really want to use from all my jars. And then what I took is my clear Elmer's glue, and I actually put glue on the front and the back of all of my labels so that it will seal the front of them as well. And then I just put them on my jars. And then I'm using my little knife here to kind of push it into place. Sometimes the fingers get in the way. All right, and then there are my label jars right there. Super cute. Okay, now I want to fill those jars. So I headed straight to my own spice cabinet and I grabbed a whole bunch of fun spices that had different looks and I had to get my tahine because it's red and delicious. And I went ahead and I filled all my spice jars with just, you know, a little bit of spice. And I did different levels. I didn't fill them all to the brim and then one of them one of the labels I found it was human eyeballs so I do have this little bag of googly eyes and they're really tiny and so I did put a few googly eyes in my human eyeball jar <laughs> It is Halloween people and then I thought I would take my mortar and pestle now that it's complete and cured And I go ahead and fill it with some spices and I started with a little bit of sea salt here And in this case, I did add some super glue to it Super glue dries fast enough where like those little salt flakes when it dissolves And then I did add a few other little spices in it also just to add a little bit more interest to it So here's a whole bunch of accessories here that are all paper and handmade items that I actually made a long time ago they actually went with one of those small scale kit but I never finished it and so I have all of a lot of the plants accessories and stuff so I thought I'd go ahead and use it in today's application. We're going to go ahead and accessorize this table and let's take a look at the conservatory really quick so you can get an idea of kind of right the look that I'm trying to go with. And I think I've left room also to add other stuff later if I find more fun things that I want to add to this. All right, and so let's go look at the table really quick too of the Practical Magic set and see their table. And so I'm going to try to attempt to kind of give it the same type of feel with the accessories that I have.
very fun. And I think, again, this is a table that I could add to later also. The same goes for this piece as well. Let's take, let's take a look at the Practical Magic room and let's go ahead and accessorize. Okay, so let's take what we've done and go ahead and add all of our pieces to the conservatory. loving this room so so much oh my gosh I definitely could live in this room all right and so let's go ahead and put I'm gonna go ahead and put the conservatory back up against the dollhouse where it belongs over the pond and then let's go ahead and take a look at some at a photo montage from that view as well All right, everybody, there you have it for this week's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I have to tell you, this might be one of my favorite dollhouse rooms that I've done. And I also have to say that even though I built it for the Halloween season, this might be a space that winds up staying permanently in the dollhouse. I love it that much. So maybe I'll just add a little different things during different parts of the year, but I am for sure probably going to keep it just like it is. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this space as much as I did everybody. I hope that you're having a wonderful holiday season. Please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like the video. Let me know what you think of the room. Of course, I always love hearing from you. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that little button so you don't miss any other episodes. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I will see you next time. Bye!